Uh, okay, so when I look back on my childhood with my parents, what do I remember? Um, I remember family bike rides. I remember a lot of good food. My mom was a, a really good cook, I thought. Um, I remember a lot of music. That was a really important part of my childhood. When my mom taught me to play the piano when I was seven. My dad taught me how to start bands when I was 17. We were singing all the time in church. What else do I remember? Um, I remember a lot of reading. My mom would read to us every night. I remember a lot of snuggling. My family was very affectionate. So, you know, have I had my disagreements with my parents over the years? Yes, I have. But it seems to me that overall, the emotions that I feel about my parents should be, you know, in line with the warmth of the childhood that they gave me. You know, any changes I need to make to my thinking in order to come around to that would be very positive. And so that got me thinking, thinking along those lines, about uh, Christianity, which also played a very important role in raising me. And, uh, you know, when I look back on my childhood with Christianity, what do I remember? Well, I went to church twice a week, and I went to Bible camp every year. And, I don't know, let's start with Bible camp, what I remember there. I remember uh, flirting with a lot of girls. I remember horseback riding and... Uh, uh, bows and arrows, and camping. Back home at church, what do I remember? Uh, I don't know, I remember a lot of food there as well. And uh, there was, I, I grew up in this farming community, so there were all these, these farmers that were there, and, and it was sort of very touching to me in retrospect. They, you could tell they were putting in a real genuine effort to just participate in our lives, you know, as kids while we were growing up. Uh, I remember stupid little stuff, like there was this uh, farmer named John Lyon who had these massive hands. And uh, like all the farmers, he didn't say a whole lot, but they mainly talked about the weather. When uh, This winter, when things got so cold, we were reminding, uh, we were reminding me of the farmers back home. All we wanted to talk about was the weather. But uh, every, every Sunday, I'd go up to this guy and uh, I'd shake his hands as hard as I could. <clears throat> but, you know, only like a little bit of my fingers would show up below, and he'd sort of grin at me and just squish my hands. I don't know, it was, it was very affectionate. It's just warm little stuff like that. And, uh, again, you know, have I, did I have my disagreements with the church over the years? Yes, <laughs> I most certainly did. Uh, the main disagreement, the most obvious, is, uh, relates to the question of uh, whether or not God exists. And I feel that I owe a real debt to the new atheists, Richard Dawkins in particular, because with a sort of brutal clarity, he, you know, made my, my personal opinion on the matter uh, that God does not exist. He, you know, it made an awful lot of sense. And it was nice. Um, that, that change suited me very well. Do I feel that other people have to make that change? No, not necessarily. But anyway, uh, so back then in my mid-twenties, you know, the question was, well, what do, you, what do you therefore do now that you don't believe in God? And the only answer that anybody had at the time was, well, now you have to stop being a Christian, right? Because the point of being a Christian is that you believe in God and stuff. But that started to seem kind of weird to me, right? Like, I've just got done explaining how my childhood was steeped in Christianity, and starting to say that I'm not a Christian anymore has, has started to feel to me like saying, uh, I'm not from Wisconsin anymore, or uh, I'm no longer a Green Bay Packers fan. <laughs> like, it's kind of ridiculous, right? Like, why would you do that? Or even more, this is, this is truer. It feels to me like saying those parents who uh, disown their kids or kids who divorce their parents, you know, when we see that, we're like, okay, I mean, I hear what you guys are saying. You're, uh, you're upset at each other. But listen, like a uh, family, it's not optional. <laughs> you don't you don't get to opt out of that. So I guess what I'm saying is, uh, I've sort of convinced myself that I'm actually still sort of a Christian, even though I very much still don't believe in God. And I think uh, a lot of people would say, "Well, hold on, that's weird. That doesn't even make sense. How can you be a Christian if you don't believe in God? What's the point?" And I would say, "Well, the point is all that great stuff that I was talking about. It's about." Having, you know, making a lot of friends, having a place to raise your kids, 
having a bunch of farmers, you know, chip in and play some basketball with the teenagers in the crowd, you know? So, the older I get, the less convinced I become of anybody whose reasoning is along the lines of it matters what intellectual tradition you participate in. Like, for example, the Christians will say, or I've known some Christians that are in the habit of feeling like that you can't be a moral person if you become an atheist. Like, somehow, you, your brain forgets how to empathize with other people. Or, um, you know, the, uh, the new atheists, I, I feel from time to time they get in the habit of saying that, you know, religion is itself evil and that we have to do away with it. But, listen, like, here's a fact. I have known many beautiful, wonderful Christians who are very close friends of mine, and I've known some real assholes who are Christians. But the same is true for atheism. I've known some really wonderful atheists and some atheists who were real dicks. So, I think, you know, what club do you belong to is not really as significant as we make it out to be. I think the more important matter is more like this. Whatever intellectual institution you find yourself participating in, you should do your best to move it towards compassion. Now, I participate in two intellectual institutions, Christianity and atheism. And to the Christians, I propose this reformation. If somebody decides for themselves that they do not believe that God exists, that ought to be okay. They should be able to continue playing and participating in the church. You know, haven't we spent enough time, you know, kicking people out and, you know, saying who counts and who doesn't count? You know, come on, let's, let's stop thinking like that. What happened to Judge Not? Yeah. Judge Not, exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, this is, this is morality basics. Whatever your belief, you've got to be nice to the people around you, right? So if somebody who is in your family or in your church family or whatever does not believe in God, that ought to be okay. It doesn't affect you. You can still keep believing in God. There's nothing wrong with that. And to the atheists, I would say, you know, as to the question of does God exist or not, let's uh, totally keep doing what we do and, you know, putting it out there for what it's worth, everybody. There are very good reasons we think to uh, think that God does, does not actually exist in real life. But, but you're welcome to do what you like. And I think atheists, we have to knock it off with this business of saying things, for example, like uh, I hear people saying that Islam is a violent religion. <sighs> yeah, it, it makes my heart hurt. Well, come on, let's, let's not go that far. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. And to be honest, you know, I get really nervous anytime an old white man starts talking about wiping cultures off the map entirely, you know? And that's sort of dangerously sometimes what, what it sounds to me like the new atheists are saying. So this is really like a very positive thing I'm trying to say here. Like, everybody calm down. Whatever clubs you belong to, it's okay. If, you, uh, if you're moving them towards compassion, if you're being nice to all the religious grandmothers, and you're being nice to all the teenagers who are, you know, asserting that they don't believe in God anymore or anything like that, then that's great. We're all on the same team here. I, uh, I have this idea that uh, a fun way to express this whole idea... Oh, look how this thing turned out. This is a, this is all a, this is a combination of wet fades and dry fades. I call them wet fades when they go from one wet color to another wet color. And then dry fades is just when you keep scraping it along over the flat black until eventually it fades out. And this guy turned out pretty amazing. Okay, what am I going to call this thing? Oh, uh, <laughs> right, so I've just proposed a very pleasant-sounding reformation to two intellectual institutions. We're going to call this painting... What sort of... Hopefully I spell this right. Troglodyte could be I suppose with one P or two piece, do you know? Opposed? Uh P two piece. Two piece. I shudder to think how many of my titles have spelling mistakes in them. <laughs> <laughs> could be opposed to that.
Dave. Oh, I just remembered a thing I wanted to talk about that I forgot. Um, I was watching this documentary about Jimi Hendrix, and they were talking to him about the uh, playing the Star Spangled Banner the way he did, and how that was so upsetting to so many people. And his answer was part of what got me thinking about uh, this speech. Uh, he said, and I'll paraphrase, you know, you guys made me sing that song every single day of my childhood. <laughs> what, did you, what did you think was going to happen? It's, he was saying that it's his song now, too. And I feel like that's the attitude to have um, for the people who make a transition like I do. The, the correct response to I no longer believe in God is, well, you know what? It's my religion now, too. And I would like to have the same innovation in my religion that uh, the Jews already have in theirs. I have all these Jewish friends who don't believe in God. And their grandparents are totally comfortable with that. They still get to participate as Jews. And, and it seems really lovely. I think we could learn from that. All right. There it is. Oh, look, and it's starting to drip down a little bit. That's a nice thing about the wet fades. They're so sloppy. You get these nice drips after. Thirty-four. Okay, not too bad. Oh, come on.